Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Well, this week, uh, we really haven't done a whole lot around here. Been uh, called away on other duties. Uh, a lot of stuff to get done uh, for fall outside, so been doing that and it's been glorious weather, so I really have no excuse. Um, so uh, this week, it's just uh, running the trains a little bit. I did do a couple of things that... Uh, we can check out here, but uh, uh, yeah, not a whole lot. So a couple of things I did get to this week. Um, if you remember, I have two of these Western Maryland uh, Bachman Silver Series boxcars, and this one was not weathered. Uh, here is the other one. I weathered it several months ago. Let's just... Uh, take it out here and this one is is weathered uh you can see some dark marks along here some fading and some rust uh there's some nice grime running down on the end there uh same thing there and then uh there's some rust streaks and stuff along there now that's the one i did several uh months ago now i did it's it's mate i had two of them so here is the one i did uh, this week, and let me just uh, get this out of the way here. So this one I weathered a little bit more, as you can see in comparison here. Uh, I kind of like taking, making a rust spot, so you've got like an area of, of the steel that is starting to rust in an area. A little bit more grime here, let me move that closer, a little more grime some grime kicked up by the road along the bottom uh, a little bit of rust on the end let's look at the other side now this is all weathering powders that's how i did it i had already dull coated them got them ready to accept the powders uh, some dark spots there another rust spot there a little bit on the roof and then some grime on the end so i did uh that one so it matches its pal. It's actually a little bit more weathered. Uh, but, you know, if you don't like it, you can always wipe it off or brush it off. So uh, I kind of like it. I like them heavily weathered. Really makes, uh, to me, it makes a difference between toy trains and model trains. I mean, this is like, you know, stuff that you see out. You know, you rarely ever see brand new boxcars going by. So uh, I like to weather them. All right, I have, let's see, I have another one. Let me put this back together and we'll bring the other one around. So you remember from the other day when I set up the consist, I told you if I had a, a car that was giving me some trouble that I would take it off and set it aside. So that car, well, there were a couple of them, but the one that ended up being taken off was this Southern box car. And it has been a little bit of a problem ever since I got it. Um, it was having some issues and it was glued together. Somebody has modified it and they glued it together. And this, you can see that, that square piece in there is the metal weight. And usually that's on the inside of the box car, but it, this one is outside and the frame, but they had it all glued together. The car wasn't heavy enough, and so it it quite often would jump the track and, and just give me some issues. So I finally sat down and uh, <laughs> uh, used a, a X-Acto knife along here and a screwdriver and got everything separated, finally got the shell off of it, and I added about, a, about three quarters of an ounce of uh, lead weights to it on the inside and then this was all rusty the metal was rusty so i uh i just shot it with some flat black paint and then i decided to go ahead and weather it so you can see i've put streaks just like the other one some rust streaks on the top there on the ends you don't want to forget the ends <laughs> and then the other side here um, so we'll see. The uh, the couplings are good. One of the draft boxes, um, I can't see which one it is now, 
has a missing end on it. It had snapped off at some point. And that typically means, see there, the coupler, instead of centering and bouncing back, gets stuck in that gap. And if it goes too far, it causes a problem. That might be some of the problem for it derailing. But now that it has proper weight in it, um, I'll wait and see. If I have to, I'll cut off the end of the frame and glue a new draft box in there and, and set it up. But we'll see how it does for now. All right, well, I get the train rolling again. I'll just put up a couple of pictures up here uh, of w me working on the Southern Boxcar on the bench. Uh, I had taken it apart and uh, cleaned it up and uh, kind of scraped out all of the, the they had used uh, CA glue to glue it together. I got that all scraped out, cleaned out. And then I used five minute epoxy to put it back together. And you'll see I have some clamps on it stuff just to, to hold it till the epoxy set. But that was a fun little project just to finally get that done. So now I'm pretty sure all of my box cars um, that one there is weathered. That one might be the only one. That's one of my original ones from when I was a kid. That might be the only one that has not weathered yet. Uh, so that'll be coming up. And then another project, remember we were working on the Virginian hopper car, uh, there. It has not been, uh, weathered. It's giving me a couple of little problems. It likes to uncouple. So I've got to deal with the coupler height uh, with that. I got to get my gauge out and set it up for the proper height. Uh, so that'll be coming up, uh, do some more work on that. And then, uh, yeah, I'd like to get that New Hampshire, New Haven, I'm sorry, uh, boxcar weathered. That's got mail sacks in it. The door's open. I like the ones that the door's open. That one, uh, I used to have some of those wooden blocks inside of it, which is nice because those doors open. You can do that. Nice little touch. Just some ground shots of the train going by. Remember what I said, you run them a little bit slower, especially when you have a, a, a small layout like I do. Uh, it really makes the layout look a lot bigger uh, to people, especially <laughs> if you have friends over. Okay, I've got, there There goes the Southern Boxcar. It's trying to derail on me again. So let's get it there. I don't know what's going on with that thing. I think it's that coupler. That thing, is, it's just been finicky ever since I got it. Just uh, any little inconsistency. And it... Uh, <laughs> It wants to jump the track or come uncoupled. But I'll keep working on it. We'll get it fine-tuned. I've been very happy with the layout uh, as of late. I haven't had any issues with track, uh, with the track uh, shifting or giving me an area that uh, is a problem, especially inside the tunnels. It's very hard to work on any of the track inside the tunnels. So... Uh, I'm very fortunate that uh, that's been good and not giving me any issues. Another uh, thing I wanted to mention when I did the consisting video last week, I mentioned that the NCE power cab could only have three recalls, uh, memory recalls for the engines. And a, a viewer pointed out that uh, you can actually program that. And he gave me a page number here. Page 58 of the manual says number of recalls. 
So it's adjustable from one to six, and I didn't know that, so thank you very much. Uh, I'll put uh, the username in the uh, comments below. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, that's very useful, and I just skipped over that. So I'm really glad when you guys uh, uh, point out something that I might be wrong on or correct me, because uh, you know I don't want to give uh, pass along <laughs> false information, and that's very helpful to have six rather than three. So pretty cool. Thanks again. Look at how close I have that. It's, it's within about a car length, but I don't want to get much closer than that. Then you start having issues. Well, I'm keeping the video short this week. Uh, just a quick update, those things I showed you. And uh, uh, just uh, some nice views of the train going around. I like having the consist because uh, it really uh, helps to, to pull more cars, uh, makes it real easy to do. So, uh, kind of fun. But uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. And, uh, yeah, here we go again. <laughs> that Southern, it doesn't like that switch right there. So, hopefully we can get it back on. That's why I have these derailers, or re-railers, I should say. I have them, you know, spread around the layout and especially in the yard pretty well because it's a great place to uh, to uh, get them to re-rail. And I had one right there. So come out of the tunnel if you derail. If you can make it past the cross, you can usually re-rail right there. So it's a, a nice place to have the different re-railers. But... Um, so like, yeah, like I was saying, that's about it for this week. Appreciate you guys. We are hovering on the precipice of 700 subscribers, which is mind blowing and totally amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for your comments and your questions and, and your interaction. That's really cool. Uh, like I've always said, if you have something you'd like to see me cover or an idea, let me know. Um, uh, I'm open to suggestions of what you guys would like to see. If you want to see just trains running or different projects, let me know. Um, if uh, it's something I want to do, um, we can certainly uh, make it happen. So thank you guys. Take care. And we will see you next video.